Namaste, beloved. This is Mother Wit. Um, my computer has um, very limited space, so I had to um, do what I needed to do for that. Um, and I got me some fresh coffee, and we're just gonna pick off where we pick up where we left off from. Um, this was the card again. Beloveds, and this card is just so beautiful to me. Um, I look at it and I see the mosaics, I see the two eyes, the eye and the brain, the eye up here, the eye here. I see the blush and the flush of being aligned, so to speak, and I see just just beauty all through this card and it's number 33 which is a six and like I said this six number six in this dog year is so powerful right now um let's move forward I can find harmony by feeling for improved thoughts Wow <laughs> no wonder this has such a vibration to it These are coming off to me as nerve synapses. And I want you to see it going in and all around and through and, and, and just everything. If we were contemplating an action that caused negative emotion, we would not proceed with the action until we had resolved the negative emotion. We would make sure that what that we had come into alignment with source before proceeding. By feeling for the improved thought in time, and usually in a short time, you will fear the harmony of your source, and you will know the appropriateness of your behavior. We would not look for the long list of right and wrong, but instead we would feel for the emotion of alignment with source. How beautiful is that? How beautiful is 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 that advice? Is that wisdom, um, beloved? It that is just that is just so perfect. The harmony. I can find harmony by feeling for improved thoughts. And I got my incense going. So if you see smoke. That's what it is. I still haven't smoked cigarettes, so I'm doing good. Um, just remember this, beloved. This, this is, let this be your mantra. I can find harmony by feeling for improved thoughts. And I'm, I'm noticing with me that is happening a lot sooner. And I can process things and I'll come back and say, okay, blah, 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 blah. You know, I was sorry, I was wrong, this and this, and that triggered me, and this made me feel like that, and that took me back to this, and, and I guess that's still unresolved, and, it, you know, it needed to come up for me to heal it, and la, 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 la. Allow yourselves this process. This is what self-healing feels like. This is what self-healing looks like. This is what self-healing is. It is the reflection on what you're feeling and what you're doing, what you're being and what you're becoming. And it's a beautiful process, beloved. And if you, like I said, if you align with your most authentic self and you seat yourself in that seat of power where your consciousness are both on the sides of you, and you know that you are the true master. This card is telling you, sit in that seat and allow your feelings, the higher light and the lesser light, to show you what you need to do and how to proceed. And if you make the wrong choice, reflect upon that. You'll, you'll, you'll know by your feelings. It'll make you feel... You, it won't feel right in your spirit. It won't sit right within your heart. It's going to keep bothering you and you're going to have to correct it. 
You're going to have to make amends. You're going to have to take that energy back in order for you to grow. And you know this. And this is how you empower yourself. By self-mastery, self-discipline, using that crook and that flail. I can find harmony by feeling for improved thoughts. You can find balance by going within and finding balanced thoughts. Reflecting upon things that you have overcome. Reflecting on your strength. Reflecting on the intelligence that you use to get you out of certain situations or through certain situations. Reflecting on the energies and the essences of your guides and guidance, your guides and guardians who are always around you. Connect with them through your senses, through your feelings. Feel their presence, even if you can't see them. Learn to feel them. Learn to be present with them. Learn to be comfortable with them. Learn to be confident with them. They are here for your best interest. They are here to serve you. Okay, that is that beautiful card. Oh my God, I love that card. <laughs> okay, and the last one. And I love this one as well. It is... It is a number six, beloveds. Let me just show you. Look at that. That is so powerful. That imagery, that imagery is just so beautiful. My most important relationship is with my source. That inner sun and that womb and that gut. There is no relationship of greater importance to achieve than the relationship between you and your physical body right here and now and the soul, source, God from which you have come. If you tend to that relationship first and foremost, you will then and only then have the stable footing to proceed into other relationships. Your relationship with your own body with money, with your parents, children, grandchildren, and your world will all fall easily into alignment once you tend to this fundamental relationship first. Hmm. There's so much harmony and connectivity. Um... And I don't know if you can see this but or not, but um, these little lines here, the little dots, and one of them goes from her eye to the central sun spiral that is there and it's it's just a beautiful card it just there's rainbow light there there's the violet flame coming from her head here <clears throat> again I'm reminded of the watermelon tourmaline um stone and I'm going to have to have to have to remember to do that um this is so beautiful. This is also the feminine essence. This is the feminine connecting with the feminine divine um, essence energy that is um, expanding and growing throughout the planet. Um, so we want to connect with that ancient spiral that is within us, that is our source. And we do that for from the soul the windows of the soul from what you see and what you don't see but what you know now and before 
Okay, that is going to end that deck. As I was moving things around, beloveds, this card from the Archangel Raphael flew out. And upon looking at it and asking it if it needed to be read, it said yes. And so that's why I'm bringing it to you. This card is called Acceptance. And look at it. Look at that. It says, Dear God and Archangel Raphael, please help me accept that everything is going in the right direction. I loved this breast piece and the the intricate design that 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 looks to me um oh my goodness what is that script it's it's almost a i can't think of it aiken i think um it's an african script but it it looks like that to me looks the sigils and so forth and that arrow pointing up. And I see fallopian tubes and all kind of stuff. Um, so I'm seeing divine union. I'm seeing um, structure. I'm seeing the divine masculine. Um, knowing his part in the healing that must take place. Okay, let's read it and see what it says. Archangel Raphael is helping you find peace within an unsettling situation. So he sends you this card. Like I said, it demanded. Well, not demanded, but. Acceptance doesn't mean that you desire or like what's going on. But it does mean that you're willing to come to peace with it. I uh hope. -huh. God and the angels hear your prayers for a healing resolution. They're now asking you to surrender the entire situation to them through the process of acceptance. And that is what I'm doing. Um, understanding and accepting that these are lessons that need to play out in order to climb the ladder, in order to go from one level to the next, in order to gauge your own internal spiritual power frequency and awareness of yourself. You, you, you're going to go through these things because they're going to strip away what they need to strip away from you, but they're also going to reinforce what needs to be reinforced. And you have to look at them through spiritual eyes, through your third eye and not your two physical eyes or through that you know, those hurt ones, those lost ones, those shadow ones inside, those ego ones, those ones. You cannot let them put this healing, put this gift of your lesson in their hands and let them teach you what it is. <laughs> no. You, you go to source with this. Archangel Raphael is saying, bring it to us. Bring it to us, and we will show you how to accept it. And we will integrate, help you integrate the lesson so that you, the next time you encounter this, your instincts will be even more, <laughs> you know, boom. So, beloveds, we have to experience life to have these to build up this awareness, to build up focus, to know how to, what to observe and what not to, to know how to see with sight beyond sight and how to feel something out instinctually from the womb, from the gut, from, from that place of knowing, from that organ, organic place, from the root place.
it's getting ready to storm, so it's getting dark outside of. I'm trying. This is similar to going with the flow and trusting that everything is working out exactly as it's supposed to. This isn't a time to resist or force anything. Surrender, babies. Let it go. And don't attach yourself to somebody else's energy that's trying to manipulate. Let it go. Surrender. You're not surrendering to them. You're surrendering to your higher self. You're surrendering to source. You're saying, Source, let this lesson be what it is. Let me be strong enough to endure it and get through it and know who I am inside of it. And let me carry that wisdom forth. And that's what you do. This isn't a time to resist or force anything. Remember the Nat Turner thing I said in the first um, video? This is not about using violence against violence. This is not about pushing back. This is about allowing your spirit energy to emerge and take flight and learn how to fly and learn how to dive. Learn how to swim and, and grab that fish from the water. Learn to do what it needs to do. Learn to use that current of wind. Learn to use those elements. Learn to go with the flow. And this is Archangel Raphael. This is all about healing at a deeply spiritual level. So, beloved, green. <laughs> Green is resurrection, renewal, revitalizing, reinventing, resurrecting, rebirth. Know thyself. And to that self be true. This is similar to going with the flow and trusting that everything is working out exactly as it's supposed to. This isn't a time to resist or force anything. Speak your mind openly and honestly. And yet, at the same time, find that balance of grace and acceptance. Possible specific meanings. The angels are working behind the scenes in answer to your prayers. Hang in there. As things are improving, keep giving your worries to God. An unforeseen positive event is on the horizon. Expect a miracle as one is here for you. My prayer, dear God and Archangel Raphael, please help me accept that everything is going in the right direction. And that is that card, beloveds. And like I said, I had, I was, that other video went out. I shut down. I went to got me some coffee. I came back to clear some more space with some of the cards. And this card just, the energy was just so woof. So I'm like, okay, okay, mama, gotcha. Okay, okay. Now I'm going to move forward to the Romance Angel Oracle deck by um, Doreen Virtue. And the reason I'm doing this, beloved, the reason I'm going into these romantic decks and cards is um, because this is this is um, the time of union. This is the time of harmony. This is the time to balance those masculine and feminine energies. Um, and many of us are going through um, many different lessons with relationships, whether they are um, romantic or else. But this is a romantic. This is for romance. This is for relationships. So let's see what we're given. Hmm. Okay, angels of the romantic deck, please give us what we need for this moon energy reading that is so powerful right now. Okay. Beloveds, 
codependency again. Codependency again. Codependency again. We are codependent upon this system. We are romantically entwined with being codependent. We really need to understand what that word means to us spiritually. Because spiritually and romantically, we are codependent upon this matrix system for our existence and for our understanding of ourselves. And we have to take back our own individual power. We can no longer be codependent. We can no longer agree to let this matrix take our identity. Let it provide us its own version of spirituality and what our identity as human beings should be and what our values should be based upon what we look like, what we how much money or how much crap we have or stuff like that, beloveds. We have to become aware of exactly who we are and of our abilities. It's it's time. Excuse me for fidgeting. Addictions are affecting your romantic life. Beloveds, until we, you heard those other cards, until we can have that non-codependent relationship with our own ego. Every other relationship that we get into is going to be codependent. It's going to have those tendencies to it because we have not learned to love ourselves, to be fully in ourselves, to understand the connections of not just romance, but a relationship, period, relationship to yourself. It takes honesty. It takes integrity. It takes observations. It takes falling down, crying, getting hurt, getting pissed off, and getting back up. It takes the fact that you can say, you did this to me, you, 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 you. And then you realize, wait a minute. If I'm saying you, you, you. Where was I in that? You is not my master. You, you, mm. So me saying, you, 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 that's giving you all the power over me, 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 me. No, me, me, me allowed. Me, me, me let happen. Me, me, me played alone. Okay? Take responsibility for yourself, for your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. You can't take responsibility for somebody else's, but you can take responsibility for yours. And you can say, well, they made me feel like this. No, you chose to feel like that. You were okay with feeling like that, so you you felt like that. Maybe you needed to feel like that in order to get to another feeling. Don't resent the lesson. Don't fear the lessons. Know that you have been through... Baby, please. This is going back through kindergarten. Okay? Just just reminding you of what school feels like. Because we finna get ready to go into real, <laughs> real deep changes, beloveds. So you got to get this relationship thing down pat. And the way you do that is you start off with yourself. And you forgive everything that's been before that. And you let it go. You give it to God. You lay that burden down. You ain't got to carry it. You don't want to carry it. Change your pattern of carrying other people's stuff and your own stuff on top of it. Say, no, nah, uh uh-uh. uh. I refuse. And go forth. Conquer. Master yourself. Establish your divine kingdom. It starts from within. You've got to go to the tree of life within you. you got to find it. That's that spine, baby. That's that digit. That's that backbone. That's where that kundalini fire, that serpentine fire is at. 
That's why people call you, what, what is it? They stab you in the back or they call you a coward or something because you have a weak spine or something like that. Fortify it. Fortify it. With spirit. With the currents of spirit, let it flow through you. Awaken that Kundalini, baby. Get that relationship with yourself going. That spiritual fire. Ignite yourself with it. Find someone who can help you do that. You know, if you don't, if you feel that you can't fan that flame high enough and big enough by yourself, spark it, and you'll attract the ones that you need that will help you. Okay, let's get going. I'm going to read this card, Codependency, and I'm going to pull just one more to um, give it some clarity. Codependence. 21, which is 3. Addictions are affecting your romantic life. This card answers your question in perhaps a surprising way. Because addictions are the culprit behind the issues you're attempting to resolve. This could be your own craving for a substance or unhealthful behavior. Or it could be that your partner's addictions are impacting your love life. Another person's lifestyle can be addict. A lifestyle can be addictive. It can be an addiction. And it can drag you into it. And... Sometimes you don't even know you're you're in it and participating, but it is what it is, beloveds. And that's why we have to remain vigilant. And this is about knowing yourself. Or it could be that your partner's addictions are impacting your love life. The card is also an indicator of childhood experiences in an addictive family. And... I don't like using the word addictive family. I like using dysfunctional because many of us comes from families where there was the addiction was psychological, psychological abuse, um, psychological verbal abuse. It, it was just, you know, there's there's no putting sanity to it. It just is what it is, and it was what it was, but you survived it, you got through it. And those are the lessons of your foundation. And instead of coming from, you have, well, you have to find where you rise from it. You have to find and become that lotus yourself. You have to see the value in being the lotus. You have to see the value of rising from the muck and reaching for the sun's rays. You have to want that. You have to crave it. Nobody can give it to you. Um, let's keep moving forward. Addictions numb the heart to pain. Again, hurt people hurt people. Whole people are holy people. They heal people. Addictions numb the heart to pain, but they also diminish its capacity to love. Since love is the basis of your romantic partnership, addictions become a barrier to moving forward toward true emotional intimacy. Addictions are also patterns, beloved. They are um, they're patterns that you have established over um, a lifetime. And some of them have been passed on um, through generations, through bloodlines. So, you know, some of it may not even be your stuff. It's just Hand it down and it's for you to deal with. You have to be the one to fix it, to heal it. If not, you pass it on to the next generation and they become the ones that need to fix it or deal with it. But we're here in this time, in this alignment and in this flow because we are the ones. This is what we were born to do. So know, that. know yourself, baby. Know yourself and be true to yourself. You're not fighting nobody outside of you. You're fighting inside of you. What you have manifested to get you to where you need to get to. 
So stay focused on that. And not that you have to be in defense mode. Because when you're in defense mode, there's a part of you that shuts down. That unconditional love part, that shuts down to a degree. And you go into a deeper, at least I do anyway, the warrior spirit place is its own energy, baby. It's its own energy. When you go into that mode, that is a mode that for most has to seek completion. It has to be finished. It has to exhaust itself before it will be extinguished. That's just, just the nature of it. That's just the fire of it. That's just the energy of it. Okay. Um, this is especially true if you are twisting yourself in knots to please a person whose dependency has lessened his or her capacity for happiness. That no-win situation will negatively affect your self-esteem and your own happiness if you continue. Beloveds, put your happiness above another's. Um, learn, many of us have not learned to put our happiness first. We are always the caretakers. We are always more concerned about what the other person is feeling and thinking and doing rather than what we're thinking, feeling, and doing. And if, if what we're thinking, feeling, and doing is in our highest interest, if it's in the highest interest of this relationship, if this is the relationship that supports the goals and the foundations of where upon which we stand and where we want to go and what we want to build upon. Okay. Fortunately, lots of support is available worldwide in the form of 12-step meetings and other addictive addiction support fellowships models. Whether it is you or your romantic partner who has the addiction, you can find free groups near you through internet searches or by contacting a local community health center. And beloveds, as a woman and children's advocate, as someone who grew up in a home that was highly dysfunctional, who grew up in the Detroit system of foster care, um, there, there is... There is a place inside of you that you have to find. And that place has to be your center of peace. And you have to create that, that place, that sacred space within your mind frame, in your thought constructs, in your programming. And whenever you need to find solitude or stillness, that is where you go. And it open, only opens for you. And only what is in your highest interest can enter that space to counsel you, to comfort you. Okay. Finances and career. Financial issues are a factor in your love life right now. Okay. Let's see, financial, finances and career is 29, which is 11, which is also a 2, but 11 is a master number, beloved, so it does not have to be broken down. Um, 29, here we go. And I'm just going to hold this card. Financial issues are a factor in your love life right now. Money and love have historically been linked, and this card points to this correlation. The romance angels want to disentangle you from your financial or career pressure so that you may enjoy every aspect of your life, including romance. While work can be a source of heart-opening satisfaction, it must be balanced with other facets of love, such as playfulness and laughter. 
You received this card because you'd benefit from an infusion of such lightheartedness. Call upon the angels to elevate your mood, energy levels, finances, careers, and anything else that will bring you peace. So I'm getting lightened up. Lighten up. Trust the universe to provide the abundance for you. And stop worrying. Stop worrying. And be grounded in center and live in your passion. And know that because of you, our passion, that red dress that she's on, and she is a manifester. She gets what she wants. She is powerful. She is able to sit in her own authority and draw from it. But she doubts her abilities. Um, and that comes from that the, the posture and from her face. From her face. Okay, so that was that. <clears throat> I have one from the Life Purpose deck, and then we'll do the Isis Oracle, and then we're down below. Um, again, this is Life, Pur Life Purpose Oracle Cards by Doreen Virtue, and I just love that. That is so beautiful. That yellow and gold, that blue and gold, boy, it has been calling me. That has been my, those have been my colors for this year. Um, I started this year off with those colors, blue and gold. Sweet, sweet, blue and gold. Sweet, sweet, blue and gold. Say what? <laughs> so, um, pay attention to the colors, beloved. Blue and gold, spiritual, all divine spirituality flows in there. That's a, a fluidity of its own when you look at the nature of it. Um, okay. Okay. Um, I'm told to take the top and, and the bottom. <sighs> okay. <laughs> All right. And two more cards came, so there we go. Um, five, five candles. Okay, five. Environmentalist. You're an earth angel who was born to protect, nurture, and teach about nature and the animals. Environmentalist. And she is just so happy in nature. She is an earth angel indeed. And she has on the color white, which means there's a purity and an innocence to her. And it's outlined in an emerald green, like velvet. That's, and she's in the field of lilacs. Environment, environmentalist, 39, which is a 12, which is also a 3, 39. You're an earth angel who has who was born to protect, nurture, ground, ground, that, that. The lawnmower is messing with. <laughs> okay. You're an earth angel who was born to protect, nurture, and teach about nature and the animals. Your passion for the environment stems from your soul's purpose. Prior to your incarnation, you pledged to commit your lifetime to helping the planet. You can feel this purpose each time you get upset about pollution and through the extreme love you feel toward animals, flowers, and trees. In fact, you often 
more connected. You're often more connected to animals than people. The reason why is that your soul resonates with the honesty and beauty of nature. And you wonder why I'm introverted. That just told you why. This card comes to you as inspiration and motivation to take action on behalf of the environment. This begins with adopting an eco-friendly lifestyle for yourself, such as recycling and using green cleaning supplies. Your environmentally related career can involve animals, dog sitting, walking, animal communication, activism, and so on. Plants, botany, gardening, landscaping, and the like. Crystals, bodies of water, air quality, alternative energy, and so forth. Notice your natural passion and interest as guideposts directing you towards actions you can take within your community to protect animals and nature. Anytime you feel upset about an issue, this is a sign regarding your purpose. Whenever you think someone should do something about this, know that that someone is you. <laughs> I love that. Okay, we'll move that one forward. The next one is Oracle Cards. You are able to discern answers and guidance for yourself and others. Wearing that pink. She wearing mama wearing that pink. Get it, boo. She wearing that pink. You are able to discern answers and guidance for yourself and others. Oracle cards. Sixty-seven, which is a thirteen, which is a four. Sixty-seven. You are able to discern answers and guidance for yourself and others. You have an affinity for working with oracle cards and they speak to you as whispers from the angels. This card comes to you as validation of the thought you've had of incorporating oracle card readings into your career. You could give readings as a full-time occupation where you offer guidance and advice to answer clients' questions. Or you may incorporate card readings as an aspect of your healing profession. For instance, by using the words on the front as focal points as you begin your sessions, oracle cards can also give you personal guidance that can boost any career path. And that was that card. The next card. Strength. Strength, beloved. Strength. Look at her. And I did say her. Strength is woman, baby. Strength is the goddess energy. That's that feminine energy. Do you know what it takes to carry life and to let that life incarnate inside of you and to give birth to that life? That's strength, baby. That is, whoo, show enough strength. I love this card. Okay, strength. Um, 81, which is a 9. <laughs> which is completion. Yay! Strength. Everything you've experienced in your life. I don't know if y'all can hear that or not. That's the lawnmower. And I'm like, hello, ain't that much grass out there, okay? <laughs> Ooh, okay, I'm, 
grounding, 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 refocusing, letting this not bother me. Telling it that's enough. See how that works? <laughs> Enjoy strength. Everything you've experienced in your life has made you strong and courageous. You are stronger than you realize, according to this card. Your career dreams require inner resolve and courage, and you've built those qualities from your life lessons. Everything you've ever experienced has brought you to this moment, and you're more prepared than ever to start a new project, and to persevere to complete it. It's human nature to shy away from projects that are perceived to be difficult or that bring up fears of failure. Nevertheless, these projects are calling your name. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. They have been for a while, and it's just gotten louder and louder. And this calling is, is something else. And what I've been called to do is so big, it's like, <laughs> how, what, when, what? And uh, what I'm getting is, you can do it. You signed up for this. You can do it. You knew all of this going in. And you said, give me this, this, and you check this, and you check that box, and you said, uh-huh, uh-huh. That'll help me get to where I need to be. Yep, yep, I need to experience this, 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 mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh-huh. And all of those things in my infinite wisdom said, Valerie, this will bring you to where you need to be in this lifetime, in this moment, to do what you need to do. You are that goddess. You have done it before. You can do it again, baby. It's time. And so I'm like... One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. You know, one foot in front of the other one. One, two. If you fall down, you get back up. One, two, one, two, one, two again. Dust it off and keep moving. Strength, baby. Strength. Strength. We come from strength. Wisdom is strong. It's strength. Self-love is strength. Self-worth is strength. Strengthen your identity because that's what has been stripped away from you by this matrix. Your spiritual identity, your spiritual sense of self, your spiritual worth. You are not a sinner. You are a child of God evolving and growing up. Up. You are ascending. You are evolving. It is human nature to shy away from projects that are perceived to be difficult or that bring up fears or failure. Be gentle with yourself. Be gentle with yourself. Nevertheless, these projects are calling your name. Whether you're guided to write that book, change careers, return to school, start your own business, or present your artwork to the public, you have the strength to do so. Which path do you think will lead to greater joy? Taking steps in the direction of your dream, even if you're unsure whether the dream is viable or whether you've taken the right steps to achieve it, or endlessly procrastinating. <sighs> Which path will ultimately be be more painful to experience, risking defeat or humiliation by taking action or playing it safe. Uh, what, what, what's that saying? Scared money? Something like that. Scared money? Don't, don't, don't get nothing. Uh, something like that. You've you got to get out there. Got to put yourself out there. You, you've got to be you. you you've got to 
Don't worry about how somebody else is going to receive you, your most authentic self. You value you enough to be you, to be strong, a strong you, to be a warrior you, to be a spiritual you. It's not about physical strength. It's about spiritual strength. Because that spiritual strength will carry you through anything, baby. Anything that this world or any other one can throw at you. You need your spiritual strength. You need your spiritual foundation. You need your spiritual identity to fight your way through it. To make your way through it. To get your way through it. To see the light at the other end of the tunnel called hope. You have to give birth to that. But in order to do that, you have to know who you are and that you have the ability to do that. Okay. Um, author. Author. Oh, I didn't say acceptance in the Raphael deck, that card. That was the first card in that deck. Um, this is 19, which is a 10, which is a also a 1, which is also new beginning. Okay, and completion. And, and ending, sorry. Ending and beginning, all in one. Ending and beginning, all in one. Author, page 19. Author, page 19. Let me, oh, didn't show you the card. Author. And this is what the card says. <laughs> you have a book inside of you that wishes to be expressed. Make the time to write it. You've long had the thought of writing a book, and this card is a signal that the time is now. This endeavor is part of your life purpose. Although you may not have a fully formed concept in mind, the act of writing will prime the pump and create a flow of ideas. You'll tap into the divine infinite wisdom while writing, which will help you better hear the voice of God and the angels. It is so true. That's why sometimes we fear it and run from it. Most authors pin their books in small time increments. So don't think that you need to retire in order to have the hours to devote to writing. Remember that if you finish just one page a day in a year, you will have produced a 365 page book. If you need additional confidence in your writing abilities, you can always take classes, join or start a writer's group, or hire an editor. The main point is to write now. And that was that card, beloveds. And this, this I'm, I'm told to show, the inspiration. We are inspired. We are holy divine beings. We receive divine information and we are to share that information because as we share it, it helps heal the vibration and frequency in the world just by putting it out there. Even if you do not share it, even if you just write it down, it, it puts it in into existence. It creates the vibration. It gives birth to the vibration. It seeds the vibration. And someone else might come along and do the actual work and you have to be okay with that you know and this is a lot of where I am right now in making peace with a lot of the things that are going on and understanding um, how I choose to feel about my identity and my spiritual voice and my spiritual strength and my spiritual identity you know I get to decide that that that's based upon my will that's based upon my design and, and what I choose to manifest. And I get to decide what it looks like. No one else does. No one else gets to put me in a mood to influence or inspire me to create my most authentic self. Don't work like that, homie. Don't work like that. And you know that. 
Next card. Spiritual teacher. Look at those golden wings. And look at the green. I just love it. And look at the serenity on her face. The peace. The peace. The peace of mind because she knows who she is. She is one with her power. She is grounded. She is centered. She is balanced in all-knowing wisdom. She is infinite intelligence, and she is good in that. Huh? Those those green silks and, and royal purples and those golden wings with a blue background and all that. Mm. You heal with your classes, sessions, and seminars. All right, let's have it. Spiritual teacher, 79, which is 16, which is 7. I knew a 7 was going to have to make its way up in here sooner or later. Spiritual teacher, 79. Here we go. Spiritual teacher, you heal with your classes, sessions, and seminars. You're a healer who reaches your audience with words. You teach in a way that brings healing blessings to your clients, readers, and listeners. You even do so with your family and friends. In fact, people seek you out for guidance, including strangers who tell you their intimate secrets and pressing problems. Your trustworthy nature and shining inner light signal to others that you're a natural-born spiritual leader. And beloved, trustworthy. Trustworthy. Are you worth worthy? of another's placing their trust in you? Or are you going to betray them? Or are you going to let them down? Or are you going to judge them? You have to be trustworthy with someone's most intimate feelings and thoughts and experiences. You have to be trustworthy. You have to treat them as your own and sometimes even more so. Especially me, because me, I want to share. Blah, 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 blah. But everybody don't want to share. And you have to learn to respect that. Or you have to ask them, is it okay if I use this situation? I won't speak of you specifically. But because of your life experience, someone else will go through this. And they could benefit from what you did or how it went on with you. Can I share this with with, you know, and and so you trustworthy, beloveds. Be trustworthy. Be honest. Be trustworthy. You know, if you're not trustworthy with yourself, you can't be trustworthy with anyone else. And it's going to show in everything you do. And who's around you and who you keep around you. This card indicates that you wish to be a spiritual teacher for the joy of it, without ego concerns about fame or fortune. You are a natural channeler who brings divine guidance to others who ask you questions about their lives. You're also acutely observant about human nature, especially as it relates to the spiritual path. As a result, you bring a unique voice to the field of spiritual teaching. As long as you remain focused on service and being your natural self, you'll find a wide and receptive audience for your work. And that's what I'm, I'm, I want to do more. I want to be able to give more. I want to be able to give not from an introverted perspective or point of view, but from a hands-on point of view. I actually want to lay hands on people. I want to hug them. I want to love them. You know, I want to let them know what being loved means, what it feels like, what it looks like. And it's a mutual thing. And it's unlimited. And it doesn't... We, we have so many sexual connotations when it comes to touching 
baby, baby, baby. That's the matrix. The indigenous ones would touch foreheads. They would touch lips. They knew that just a hand was could lay in the hands on you, could heal you. Just because they said, mm. And they sent that current through you. It was their prayer. Mm. This is what we need. We need to touch each other with love, with agape love, understanding that we are a collective and we are all in this womb at the same time. And it's not coincidence that we are all here right now and that everyone who has come before us has experienced life and have left that energy here on this plane for us to utilize, for us to learn from, for us to know ourselves. I just saw that. Beautiful. Okay. <clears throat> take a moment now and ask your guardian angels, what is the next step for me to take upon my pathway as a spiritual teacher? Notice the thoughts, feelings, and signs that come to you as answers and continue asking the angels for additional 